wisdom, prudentia, justice, justicia, temperance, temperantia, courage, fortitudo. Applying ancient philosophy to modern life, this is the Sunday Stoic. Welcome to the Sunday Stoic Podcast. This is Steve coming to you from what is currently sunny Conway, Arkansas. The Stoic here where I live with my family and uh, I teach biology and have a three and a half year old and a lovely wife who's a librarian and uh, we're living as good of a life as we can figure out how to pull off. This podcast uh, approaches the philosophy of Stoicism from the ancient Greeks and Romans and uh, discusses how to apply it to modern life, uh, how to live a life that is fulfilling, uh, useful, uh, and uh, just, moral, and uh, hopefully a little courageous as well. Before we get into the show, I'd like to uh, make an announcement that I have purchased airline tickets to go to uh, to go to Stoicon in Toronto in October. So if any of you are planning on going, let me know. I'd love to meet you. Also, uh, on Patreon, I will be adding some uh, awesome Sunday Stoic stickers that I've put on all of my possessions now, uh, as well as uh, a few magnets, I believe. Uh, Coming up soon. Thought about ordering another batch of those cool coins, but uh, but uh, uh we'll see. Those those are like uh, three or four hundred dollars a batch, so uh, we might hold off on ordering another batch of those yet. But <laughs> we have uh, a few uh, bit, items like that coming in. Uh, I'll try to bring some to Stoicon to pass out too. But uh, patrons, you can get yours soon. And also, patrons, remember that we have a book discussion on Discord uh, that we're starting. So uh, you can join as a patron, www.patreon.com slash Stoic. You'll get access to the first 10 or so episodes of the Sunday Stoic that I've archived on there, as well as a uh, chance to interact with me, uh, other patrons, and uh, uh, join in the book discussion and things like that. So, this week I am going to do uh, a discussion on reading the Stoics. Um, we talk a lot about, here's a quote from Marcus, here's how we can apply it to our lives, etc. But ultimately, one of these days, this podcast will stop. And and uh, hopefully I can inspire a lot of you to, if you haven't already, to uh, dig in to these works yourselves. They're very accessible and uh, maybe you'll start your own podcast, or maybe uh, uh, you'll just uh, you know reflect on your own uh, and, and live live the good life uh, using these texts as a guide. And I bet a lot of you are doing this already. Uh, I'm not saying you're not. I'm just going to give you my tips on how um, I approach these things. Um, maybe not in the most systematic way uh, possible. Uh, if I had a little more time, a little less, uh, uh, <laughs> a little. Less time trying to keep my three-year-old alive and all that good stuff. I would uh, approach it more thoroughly. But this is what I do at the moment, okay? Uh, The kinds of things I do. First of all, if I was getting started, I would start probably the way I started, and that is with an introductory type text. Um, I started with A Guide to the Good Life by William Irvin. Now, you don't have to start with that particular book. Um, It has its... Uh, I point. Uh, it's good points. It talks a lot about serenity and things like that, and or uh, uh, being at peace, living the good life, being a happy life. But some argue that it misses some of the tenets of Stoicism. I don't think it really matters. It's an introduction. It's not the read this and be done uh, studying Stoicism <laughs> text. It's not the Bible of Stoicism. So um, it is a good intro. It's readable. It's 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 a good light intro and it won't scare you off if you're on the fence. Um, but also, uh, you have plenty of other books to choose from, including uh, my favorites, which are How to Think Like a Roman Emperor by Donald Robertson. Um, he also has a, a Teach Yourself Stoicism book, which is also very good. Um, How to How to Be a Stoic by Massimo Piliucci, very good. And one of my other, other favorites, uh, The Practicing Stoic by Ward Farnsworth. Um, all of those I have found to be immensely useful 
introductory text. They all are a little different, just like all the Stoics are a little different. Uh, in How to Think Like a Roman Emperor, you're going to get a, a lot of more Marcus Aurelius than the rest, but, but you'll hear mentions of the other Stoics as well. Um, how to be a Stoic, uh, you might get a little more Epictetus in there, but not, but once again, it's not all Epictetus in that text. Uh, the practicing Stoic, uh, I th- word has mentioned on the show is kind of designed like a semester's long course in Stoicism and the descendants of some of the Stoics. So, um, uh, uh, a little different approach there, how they approach different topics. I would probably start um, with A Guide to the Good Life or How to Be a Stoic or uh, the Roman Emperor text or or uh, uh, Robert Donald's other book, but um, maybe I would use Word as an intermediate step for uh, after I've read uh, one of those introductory texts because um, it's heavily driven by quotations. Um, and so maybe I would I would start with someone's uh, inter- uh, introduction and then read Ward's. Ward has a lot of uh, quotes, but also his interpretations as well. But they're all very good. That's just what I would do. Then uh, after reading one of those introductory texts, you're welcome to read more than one. Um, I would move on uh, probably to Marcus Aurelius's Meditations. I started with the Gregory Hayes translation. It's a very accessible translation, very easy to read, and uh, I highly recommend it. But uh, Donald Robertson and others, uh, as co-authors there, uh, have put out a new (coughs) uh, version of that text, um, and it just came out, and I'll put a link in the show notes, and I have not read it yet. Uh, I just got it in the mail yesterday. I've read the first page or two, and it looks like it'll be a great easy read, good read. And I say easy read because if you get an old translation... It reads a lot like the King's James Bible or something, and it's just a little clunky for modern readers to, to get through and, and fully grasp. So I would stick to a pretty recent translation of Marcus Aurelius, if possible. So try out the one with by Donald or, or Gregory Hayes. Um, there are others, like I said, but I haven't read all the books. For example, when it comes to the introductory text of Stoics, there's the Little Book of Stoicism. There are others as well. I have not read them all. I don't uh, get free copies of everyone's books, uh, being the Sunday Stoic. I, uh, I, I might get one or two for an author that's uh, joining the show, but I have not read all the books, uh, all the introductory texts. Um, so uh, I've read the ones that I've mentioned. Um, so after reading Marcus Aurelius, first of all, while reading Marcus Aurelius, I have a recommendation, uh, starting, uh, and you can do this with the introductory text as well. Um, if it's your own book, you can start a reading practice. And what I would do, um, is get a little, one of those $2, $3, whatever they cost where you live, um, uh, composition books, something like that, and start a journal, a, a reading journal. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, first of all, you can highlight things or write in margins, uh, if you wish, or if you're reading on a Kindle, you can, you know, highlight on there. Uh, but I would, with my own hand, with a pen, um, after reading, uh, with Marcus, it's a little bit harder because he writes in little chunks, right? Like there'll be a, a short reading, uh, and then another short reading and maybe a longer one, then another short one. So you'll have to decide how you want to sparse it out, but read, you know, uh, a bit of Marcus and then paraphrase what he said in your own words make it your own and then in another paragraph write about what you take from that and how you might apply that in uh, the 21st century um what what can you take out of that what new insights does it give you how does it make you think about things differently stoicism is uh one of its major strong points is it allows you to uh uh, it's almost like having a periscope. You're used to looking forward, but suddenly you can look back and you're like, whoa, that's a different perspective I never thought about. <laughs> and uh, and you can see things from different angles than perhaps you had before. And so reflecting on that can be very useful. I would go on after reading Marcus then. Now, Marcus is a good intro. Uh, the thought that, you know, there's basically the diary of the Roman emperor. I would then um, consider reading the Enchiridion. Um, when it comes to the Enchiridion, uh, one of my listeners, Nathaniel, recommends uh, Sam uh, Tarod's translation. I think it's called the, the it might be called the Manual or something like that. Um, I'll put a, try to put a link to it in the show notes. I have not read that one. Um, I myself have enjoyed uh, the Dover Thrift Edition because I bought it for like ninety nine cents on Amazon, <laughs> uh, and the Penguin Classics and the Oxford Classics editions are all very readable and well done. Um, I think with the Enchiridion, 
there are some old out of print editions that I, I have a hard copy that are pretty readable, but as you go back in time, some of those translated from Greek are a little bit on the King James Bible side of things and a little more flowery English and old fashioned English and harder to read. So sticking with one of those newer translations is probably a good idea. Another thing you can do, and uh, uh, I've enjoyed very much, is reading uh, The Art of Living by Sharon LaBelle. Uh, what she's done there, uh, you know, my impression of what she's done there is she read uh, the works of Epictetus. Uh, well, uh, he didn't write them himself, of course. Arian did his student, but the, the, the works of Epictetus. And uh, then uh, took those and kind of paraphrased them or took ideas from them and reworked them a bit and modernized them and and uh, without losing uh the the ideas of course and and kind of uh, repackages it a little bit into a nice little readable manual that I think is uh an excellent supplement um so I recommend you check that out if you get a chance um there's also a modern translation one of the first copies I bought cuz I was intimidated by one of the old translations I had, I bought a modern translation by uh, 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 Chuck uh, 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 Chakrapani, and uh, it's pretty good as well. In fact, I think I will uh, 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 have an announcement about that uh, book at the end of this episode. Um, after I read The Enchiridion and I took some notes on the important things I've read there, I think what I would do next is start on Seneca. Uh, and where I would start there is Seneca's letter from, Letters from a Stoic, uh, also known as the Moral Letters to Lucilius, which the Moral Letters to Lucilius are free online, um, and it's an easy-to-read translation. Um, letters from a Stoic is, I think, practically the same translation, the one that I have. I just bought the Dover Thrift Edition, a paperback for nine ninety nine, and uh, I found that to be an excellent translation. There's also um, the uh, – oh, let me grab it off my shelf here um, – yeah, Loeb Classic Library versions. They're hardback and they're small, uh, but you have to buy several editions to get the full letters from a Stoic, and each of them are like $22, $25. So that's another option for those of you who have more cash to spend. Um, now with Seneca, um, I would space it out. I did. I read Seneca's letter from a Stoic over a one-year period, and I took notes every day. I ended up with 80 pages of notes uh, from letters from a Stoic, and I found it to be very useful. And in fact, I want to read it again, but I wouldn't read it like a novel because your head's going to just get full, uh, and you're gonna, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. At least for me, I don't think I could read it all uh, like page after page after page after page. I would read one chap, one letter from Seneca, or half a half of a long letter from Seneca one day. Finish the next the next day, so on and so forth, and space it out. Just like people do read the Bible in a year, uh, you might stretch out letters from a Stoic over a period of time, but there's a lot of good stuff in there, so don't skip that one. After that, I think I would go then to the Discourses of Epictetus. Uh, the Discourses, also uh, written by Arian, um, a lot more in-depth than the handbook, um, a lot of good stuff in there, uh, and and I think I would I would do that. And after you've read that, then you've read most of what the big three have to offer. Okay. And then from there, I would move on to other things. And I'm uh, in terms of the discourses, I would recommend once again the Penguin. Uh, well, the Penguin Classics or the Oxford Classics. I think the Penguin Classics are like uh, the highlights of of it. But the Oxford Classics, I believe, is the entire. Uh, well, what we have left of the discourses, they don't leave anything out. So. Um, um, I, but they're both quite readable. And then you can go on to read uh, Musonius Rufus. There's only a few translations of that even available. Um, um, works by Cicero uh, on Stoicism uh, you can check out. You can, uh, Massimo has some of his summaries of the works of Cicero, which is a good place to start perhaps. Um, that's what I would do. And, and all the time, take notes. Uh, like I said, I have a philosophical reading journal that I need to go through and edit and see if I can do something with someday. Um, but uh, I, I should be on top of it more. But uh, but I have, you know, a hundred or more pages of notes that I've taken now over this stuff. It's almost its own book at this point. And um, what I would do is, is uh, don't forget to not only paraphrase but then reflect. What I like to do is read a letter from Seneca and paraphrase it either while I was reading it or after I read it and then have another paragraph beneath that of my reflection 
upon what I read. Use metacognition. Think about what you've read. Did that make sense to me? How could I apply that to my life? Am I applying that to my life? Do I agree with Seneca or do I disagree? These are the things you should ask as a philosophical writer, not everything they say is right and I need to apply it all. No, think about it critically. Do you agree and how can you apply it to your own life? That is how I would approach these things. And then you can start sorting these things and making your own guide to the good life, as it were. Uh, pick the quotes that mean something to you and, and so on and so forth. But I would read these things thoroughly because on this show we do you know little snippets. And I try to read bigger snippets than some other podcasts do sometimes because life is not a soundbite. Philosophy is not a soundbite. Uh, to get this really in your head, to see the big picture, you need to climb up to the mountain and look down on all of it at once and not at little tiny sound bites uh, and, and think that you can stitch, you can't stitch sound bites together into a philosophy either. You need to see uh, the magnificence of the totality of this, of these ideas uh, to see how uh, it might apply to your life. So that's my advice. Now, um, so I have a an extra copy of uh, uh, Chuck uh, Chakrapani's uh, version of uh, the Discourses of Epictetus. So I will give it away to a listener. Uh, but what you need to do is on the Sunday Stoic Facebook page or on Twitter, put pictures of yourself, a, a selfie of you reading your favorite Stoic book. All right. Carpe diem. Thank you for listening to The Sunday Stoic. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe, rate, and review The Sunday Stoic on iTunes. Become a member of The Sunday Stoic team, earn rewards, and be an integral part of the show by becoming a patron at www.patreon.com slash sundaystoic. Contact the show by emailing sundaystoic at gmail.com or by leaving a voicemail at 501-503-3132. To find out more, visit www.sundaystoicpodcast.com. And as Steve always says, Carpe Diem. Carpe Diem.